with some artists that I've written with, which has mostly been singers, where I'm the musician, they're the singer. It's really been a case of uh, trying to instigate the, the lead line, the melody line, through something I'm playing. Um, or, you know, sometimes it's just a, a blatant, here's the melody um, thing. But uh, definitely something I think I learned with working with Rob Zombie and writing with him is I always try to find something that's kind of blatantly melodic in the music to uh, latch on to that becomes the melody that, and, 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 you know, and the lyric comes through that. In other situations with writers, I mean, you just kind of fit in where you can fit in. I find like I'm the, the guy that comes in and, you know, inserts things that are missing. I've tried sitting in rehearsal rooms forever working on songs to the point where you get burnt out on them. They don't sound fresh anymore. Uh, and I've had really good luck of only listening to the songs once, which I love to do, take notes, listen to the song for the first time, take my notes, my initial reactions. Because a lot of times I think that, you know, as a listener, that's what you're doing. When you hear a song for the first time, you either like it or you don't. So I try to listen with those, you know, fresh set of ears, and, and really I, I value that first pass through and what my instincts are on that and, you know, kind of and take those notes and keep them all the way through the recording process. In my experience, is there's been you know two schools of thought. There's the, you know, the, the the guys like Brian Adams, who I've heard say, "Well, I only write this many songs a year, and I really make them count. I just, you know, I'm going to really make these songs the one, and not spend, you know, the year writing 200 songs. I'm going to write 10. They're going to they're going to be outstanding." Um, and then you you know, there's the other thought that you know I'm going to write 200 songs, and out of those 200, you know, 10 are going to stand out. So. I think it depends on the approach. I mean, if you're writing for top 40, um, it's, you know, we kind of live in a different uh, world than we did even 10 years ago where, you know, the, the access that people have to, to music, you know, whether it be on your, your steering wheel to be able to change stations all the time, you're on your iPod, you really don't, you don't really have the patience like you used to. You know, you used to, uh, maybe not so much with the CD, but even with the CD, sometimes you get tired of changing it, so just put it in and you're like, listen to a song, you know, with an iPod, it's so easy to just skip around and delete it from your playlist. If you're writing a song specifically, especially for commercial market, it's more of a crafted thing, whereas I think uh, if your band is just kind of like screwing around, looking for something different, you may just write randomly every day and step on something and it's not so premeditated, but I think a lot, a lot of songwriters out there kind of know what they're looking for, especially when they're crafting a song.